Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing a book haul. I haven't done a book haul, well, since I was on my last channel. And to be honest, I can't remember what I put in that book haul. So I'm pretty sure that these are all new books that I haven't talked about yet. Um, I have hauled a lot of books, but I've already talked about them on my channel, whether it be like a wrap up or a TBR or something like that. But these are books that I have bought in bought and bought since my last book haul that I haven't yet talked about on my channel. So there's quite a bit here. I was thinking about breaking this up into two parts, but I'm not going to. So hopefully you don't mind a longer video. And if you guys are wondering, I'm wearing my Valaris sweatshirt. A lot of people have asked me where I got this sweatshirt on Instagram. And I actually got this on Amazon. So I'll put the link down below to um, the sweatshirt. So lately I've been in the mood for horror novellas. I don't know where this came from. Actually, I do think I know where this came from. I discovered a new YouTuber and I watched her best books of 2022 video. And she literally made every single book that she talked about in that video sound so good. She was so good at selling a book. And I put so many of those books on my TBR and a lot of them were horror novellas. And I was like, I think I'm a horror novella girl now. Like I want all of them. So these are some of the books that she put on her best books of 2022 video. I'm going to put her um, channel down below. I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but these are a couple books that she put in that video. The first one is Psycho. If you guys saw my vlog on my vlog channel, my recent one going to Portland, you saw that I purchased this at Barnes and Noble, and I've never even seen the movie. So I have no idea really what this is about or like what it, I mean, I know what it's kind of about, but not really because I've never seen the movie, but this is like really short. It's like, kind of a novella and I didn't realize that this was going to be so short so I'm really excited to read this and she said it was really really good in book form so I'm really excited to read this and then I got Pen Pal by Dathan Aberbach and this sounded super super interesting and it's also a pretty short book so I think what she said this book was about was like this boy who decided that he wanted a pen pal or like they had some sort of assignment or something where they had to like write a pen pal or something but with his pen pal really 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 weird things started happening and this pen pal started being really creepy and dark and it was like really weird and really twisty and really disturbing so I was like that makes me curious. I don't know, I just think this sounds really interesting and I think it's a really cool sounding synopsis. So I'm really, really excited to read this and I think it's gonna be a pretty quick read, but this was in her best books of 2022. So I was like, I'm gonna buy it and I'm gonna read it. Now the next book I actually got on Amazon and this was also in her best books of 2022 and I didn't realize this book was gonna be so small. I should have just bought this on my Kindle, honestly, because I thought this was gonna be kind of just like a regular size novella, but it's like this little tiny miniature book. Like if you look at it compared to this one, it's like a little baby book and it's really short. This is 90 pages. So this is about a girl who finds the perfect boyfriend and her best friend is like, uh, I don't really like him. He's giving off like a weird creepy vibe. Like, I don't know about him, but he's like, no, this man is like literally perfect. And she kind of like disregards some of his weird hobbies. Like he likes to do woodworking and he makes like these big wood like figurines of women, like statues. And that's like his hobby. And he also loves pranking. And so they kind of get into this prank war with each other. And she thinks it's really fun. So one day she decides to pull a prank on her boyfriend and then things start to go really, really wrong. And she realizes a lot of really weird things about her boyfriend that she didn't know before while she's trying to pull this prank on him and I thought this sounded so interesting and I'm so curious about like this woodworking hobby that he has like this just sounds really really good so I'm super excited to read this and I think it's gonna be a really really fast read so okay so the next book is from a book box so I subscribed to the bookish box the adult bookish box for like five months I think four or five months and I unsubscribed sadly because the books were taking so freaking long to get here like I I think subscribed in like September and I didn't get my first bookish box until like January which is insane like it took literally so long to get my first book and they're always like backlogged and they like I don't know it was just frustrating to me and I felt like I was like buying all these books but I wasn't getting them and it was frustrating to me but I'm getting like four or five of them and I've already gotten three so there's a few of those books in this haul but the first one is this. It's a beautiful hardcover of Between Wrath and Mercy. As you guys know, I've already read this. I didn't know this was going to be in the book, the bookish box, but um, I love this first book. I gave it five stars. Sadly, I wasn't a fan of the second book, but this book was really good, so I'm glad that I have a really nice copy of this one. But it has like this beautiful, beautiful spine, beautiful cover, and then the back looks like this. It has um, Emmeline on the back cover, 
and the sprayed edges are beautiful. But the cool thing is too, is it has this, these beautiful end papers. So this is Emmeline. She's a beautiful curvy goddess. And then we have um, Rainier right here. So this is like the couple of the book and it's really cute. The same picture is actually on the back as well. And it's just a beautiful book. Beautiful. I love that it's like light lavender purple and it's just beautiful. But I've already read it so I'm not gonna obviously read this for a very long time if I ever do but it's cool to have like a really nice copy of it and I could probably get rid of my other copy because it's just like a paperback. The thing about it is though is it's all annotated so I don't know if I want to get rid of this one unless I move my annotations into that one but I don't know if that will ever happen so. So the next two books that I picked up was King of Battle and Blood. This is uh, Scarlet St. Clair's kind of newer series and Scarlet St. Clair wrote the Hades and Persephone one, um, A Touch of Darkness, which I read the first two books in that series but I never really continued. Not because it wasn't the worst book series of all time, it just wasn't like my favorite of all time because I felt like the first book and the second book were like the same book just from different perspectives and I thought it was really really weird that it was like literally the same book just from different perspectives. I felt like I was reading the same story twice. So I was just kind of like, eh, I don't know if this is for me. So then I just stopped reading it. But I really want to read this. So this is basically about Isolde. I think that's how you pronounce her name. And actually, you know what? I think I already hauled this book in my last haul video. But whatever. If I did, I'm sorry. This is about Isolde. And is that how you say that name? Is Isolde? Isolde? Is it Isolde? I don't know. But it's about her and she wants to protect her kingdom and the way that she can protect her kingdom is by marrying Adrian and she wants to marry him and then kill him basically to protect her kingdom. And her assassination attempt fails which sucks because he's like if you try to kill me again I'm going to raise you as the undead and make you everything that you fear. And so she's like oh crap like what am I gonna do? And in all of that process, I'm not sure what the rest of the story is, she obviously starts to find him attractive. So it's like a enemies to lovers type of thing and I think it sounds interesting. And so I got that one and then I got the second one as well. I haven't heard the best things about this one. I've heard good things about this one but I haven't heard good things about this one. Which is really sad. But I'm still gonna read it anyways because I love a good romance fantasy. A good romanticy. So that one is on my list. And then I found this one in one of those little free libraries and I was like, uh, excuse me? But I'm a little bit less excited to read this because I just read Book Lovers and we'll talk about that in another video. But I found this one, People We Meet on Vacation. And I've heard really good things about this. Some people love this more than Book Lovers and some people like Book Lovers more than this one. Um, but I'm going to give Emily Henry another try and I'm going to see if I like this one. And if I don't, then I'll probably just not really read Emily Henry ever again because she's not really my type of author. Okay, the next one is Life's Too Short by Abby Jimenez. So as you guys know, Abby Jimenez's book um, Part of Your World is one of my favorite romances of all time. Loved Part of Your World. I thought that Abby Jimenez just did such a good job at making like a realistic romance that wasn't irritating. Like I never got irritated in it which was like a huge deal because I get irritated in romance a lot. Um, so I wanted to read another one of her books because I was just curious to see if Abby Jimenez is totally my type of author because I just need another author. Like I read a ton of Tessa Bailey but like I needed like a new romance author, you know what I mean? So this is about a girl that wants to travel the world and she starts a YouTube channel and she ends up gaining like tons of YouTube followers which I love because I'm a YouTuber so I think I would really relate to that type of like thing. But what ends up happening is her sister ends up dropping her child off and wants her to take custody of this child I guess. I don't, I don't really know. But what ends up happening is this hot lawyer that she, that moves in like next door but it's like her lawyer or something, they end up falling for each other and she has like custody of this baby that she was like not expecting to have and so now she has to like deal with all of that with like this hot lawyer guy. So that's pretty much all I know and pretty much all I understand about this. I'm sure it'll make more sense when I read it but we're gonna see if I like it. So the other book that I picked up when I picked up the book Psycho was this one. This is Tessa Bailey Secretly Yours. Now I love Tessa Bailey. I really really like her and I tend to rate her books higher than some people I've noticed and sometimes you just find an author that you mesh really well together um, even though other people may not like them as much. So I'm not going to get too judgy but I haven't heard the best things about this. Like I've seen a lot of people rate this book really really low and I'm really curious as to why but what was that book that she just wrote recently? Uh, oh, My Killer Vacation. A lot of people put, like rated that book super, super low and I was like, it wasn't that bad. I gave it four stars. So 
I might really like this because I just tend to be a fan of her writing style so I'm not gonna judge this too hard yet but I will let you guys know what I think hopefully she doesn't let me done with this I'm really crossing my fingers I don't know um, but we're gonna see hopefully it's good so this book I thought was really interesting I got this at my local bookstore and I had a bunch of credits there so I decided to use them and this is called you were here too by Colleen Oakley and one of the main reasons I thought this sounded interesting is because it's about dreams and I love dreams I think dreams are fascinating I love like trying to interpret dreams. I don't think all dreams really need to be interpreted. I think dreams can be just passive things that you just kind of like you see somebody and then you dream about them or whatever but I do think that some dreams have a lot of tie to like the subconscious mind and I think that dreams are just super super interesting and so when I saw this was about dreams I was like all about it. So this is basically about a girl who has a husband and she wants to start a family with him but then she starts having dreams about this one guy he's like the main starring role in her dreams and she's like who is this guy and why does he keep popping up in my dreams and then they end up moving to a small town in Pennsylvania and she comes face to face with this guy that's in her dreams all the time and what she ends up finding out is this guy has been dreaming about her as well and he also has like a big secret or something. I don't know. So I thought that sounded really interesting. Like what is the twist going to be? Like why are they dreaming about each other? I'm really curious to find out. So I think this sounds really, really, really interesting and I'm really excited to read this. So this next book is a book that I found at my local Goodwill for $4.99 and I just decided to pick it up. Like when I'm in the mood for like a good romance, I'll have one on my shelf and this is called Head Over Heels and this is by Hannah Orenstein. Orenstein? And this is like a gymnastics romance, which, I mean, I'm not a gymnast, I'm a cheerleader, or I was a cheerleader, but... So this is basically about a girl who was a major gymnast, and her goal was to go to the Olympics, but then she ended up getting an injury, and so she in not, didn't end up going to the Olympics, but her best friend went to the Olympics, and after, like, that heartbreaking thing that happened, she ended up moving back to her hometown, and she met this guy who was a gymnastics coach, and he asked her to help him coach and in that process they you know fall in love or whatever this sounds like kind of boring I'm not gonna lie like where's the plot like where's that cool interesting plot line but I'm still interested this is one of those books that I'm going to just try out if I like it then I'll continue reading it if I don't then I might just DNF it I don't know we'll just have to kind of see with this one but because it was at my goodwill and it was pretty cheap I was like I'm gonna buy it plus it's a book of the month so Hopefully it's good. I don't know. So the next book is another bookish box book and this was the first one that I received and it was just so stunning. I was like that is the most beautiful book I've ever seen and it is A Dowry of Blood. It looks like this and I feel like not a lot of people have probably seen this um, special edition but it's so pretty. I love that front cover art and the back looks like this. It's basically just the front but the back. So this is actually pretty cool because you can change to this side of the dust jacket if you want which is kind of more of just like a rose gold very graphic type of thing and the naked book oh so beautiful it's red and it has this beautiful gold foiling on it I just absolutely love naked books with all this gold foiling on it I just think it's the prettiest thing um, these are the end pages and the most amazing thing this is the signed page right here but check this out you have this big piece of art right here which is stunning I love books with art in them I wish more fantasy books had art in them I just think it makes such a cool experience with reading so this is the last one that I got from bookish box I think I'm gonna get two more they just haven't arrived yet um, this I've actually never heard of this book so I'm not even really that sure what it's about so we're gonna find out together but this is what it looks like it has this beautiful cover with this beautiful art on it it has all these like crows pink foiling this is the side this is the back this isn't my favorite cover I would say of all time but it also has a flip side though so you can change it to this I think if you want this is the naked book we have clouds in like a really pretty pink foiling so that's really cool this is the spine and we've got art I don't think this art is the best it's like not my favorite art I feel like it looks a little juvenile um, it looks like it would fit like in a nice YA novel or something which isn't a bad thing it's just not my favorite art I've ever seen you know but it's not bad and then we've got this it's like a colored page which is really cool but we've got this so those are the two main characters very very pretty so yeah and I think this might be Spanish 
because there's a lot of Spanish in the glossary, so I don't know if these people like speak Spanish. Until an oracle predicted my regal future, I never imagined myself rising above the curve of my round ears. After all, I was the magicless halfling loved by beasts but loathed by every pure-blooded fairy at court. Well, by all but one. Dante Reggio, Prince of Luz, had owned my heart since he gave me my first kiss. If gathering a slew of iron relics could help me overthrow the current monarch and crown his brother to rule at my side, then treasure hunting, I'll go. If only the oracle had warned me what winged demon I was releasing into the world and that I'd become this demon's obsession. Sounds interesting. I don't know. So the next book that I got was actually from Travis. He bought me this for uh, Valentine's Day, I think. And it is Stone Blind, and this is a Medusa retelling, and it is a very, very pretty book. Pretty bronze foiling on it. And this is just a Medusa retelling. That's pretty much all I know about it. So I think this is a YA book. If you guys know anything about this, let me know what you guys think about it. He just thought it looked really cool. He knew that I didn't have it. And the bookseller that was at the store told him that this was good. So the next book that I picked up was one that I've heard such amazing things about. And I really, really, really want to read this. But I don't know. Do you guys ever feel like you have so many series that you want to start? but you're so overwhelmed when you have too many series that are ongoing for you. Like that's how I feel a lot of times and so I don't want to start too many series at once because I get overwhelmed with the amount of series that I have that are unfinished. And I don't like to be in too many worlds at once because it just confuses me. But I really really want to start this one but I have to figure out like what book series I want to start first. You know what I mean? Like this is why I don't love like six book series or five book series because they're so daunting because I'm not somebody that likes to be in these big series. Like I don't like to be in too many at once. You know what I mean? So I think with this one I'm gonna wait until more books are out because one thing I've realized about myself is I will not continue on with the series if it takes too long for me to get my hands on the next book. Like if it takes the author like a year to write the next book I'll just never read it because I'm going to forget what happened in the other one and then I'm never going to like pick up the next one. So I feel like with book series I have to wait until there's like a decent amount of the books out or the whole series out before I start them and I feel like with this one I'm going to have to do that so I'm going to wait a little while but I really want to read it right now but I know that's probably not the smartest thing for me to do. Anyways you guys will probably be like shut up just tell me what the book is. <laughs> okay so this is The Serpent and the Wings of Night by Carissa Brodent. Yeah, Brodent. And this is book one of the Nightborn Duet. Oh, it's a duology, right? That's what duet means. Good. I love duologies. Like, I love them. I wish more authors would write duologies. Like, I love them. So this is apparently a duology. So that makes me really happy because maybe I can read this because I think this the next one comes out like later this year. Anyways, everybody says this is so flippin' good. Like, this is so good. Apparently, though, People go into this thinking it's going to be like this hardcore romance, but the romance actually doesn't pick up until much later in the book. Um, but it's still really, really, really good. Like everyone says this is super fast paced, so much going on, and it's just so good. I haven't heard any bad reviews about this book. And a lot of people say if you like A Court of Thorns and Roses, then you have to read this book. So I'm like all about that. But that is what I got. So this is about the adopted human daughter of the Nightborn Vampire King, Aurea carved her place in the world designed to kill her. Her only chance to become something more than prey is entering the Kijari, a legendary tournament held by the goddess of death herself. But winning won't be easy against the most vicious warriors from all three vampire houses. To survive, Aurea is forced to make an alliance with a mysterious rival. Everything about Rain is dangerous. He is ruthless. He's a ruthless vampire, an efficient killer, an enemy of her father's crown, and her greatest competition. Yet, what terrifies Aurea most of all is that she finds herself oddly drawn to him. <gasps> Their blossoming attraction could be their downfall in a kingdom where nothing is more deadly than love. So that sounds really, really good. So I'm really excited for that one. The next one is Alice Feeney Rock, Paper, Scissors. I bought this one because, again, I had some points or whatever at my local bookstore, so I ended up getting this one because I've heard really good things. So this is apparently about a guy who has um, face blindness, and I'm really interested in that. Like I've heard really 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 good things about this and I think it's really creative that she decided to write a book about face blindness and I think it's about like they're in like this cabin or something and like weird things start happening. I don't really know but whatever it is I'm curious. 
So I'm really excited for this one. I love a good thriller. You guys know I read a lot of thrillers. I've been like on a thriller kick lately, honestly. So I'm really excited to have that one. So the other one I picked up was Sherry Lapina, The End of Her. This is like floppy, 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 and I love it. So Sherry Lapina isn't my favorite thriller writer, but she's not like my least favorite either. The thing about Sherry Lapina is she doesn't really develop her characters the best. She doesn't make like really, really, really rich, believable characters. She's very plot driven in her books. And I tend to like a little bit more character development in my thrillers, I've noticed. So that's one thing I don't love about Sherry Lapina's writing, but I do always find myself pretty interested in the plot. So this is about a girl who is a mother. She's a new mother to twin girls. Her and her husband just had these beautiful babies. She has everything that she ever wanted. And then one day, um, her husband's ex-girlfriend comes into their life and tells her that the death of his ex-wife was actually not an accident like he says that it was. So the main character is just trying to figure out what she means by this and she's just trying to figure out like, you know, who her husband actually is, I guess. So I thought it was really, really interesting. I love a book with babies and like when the main character has kids because I have kids and I understand like that protective mama bear aspect of having kids. And so I really, really like that aspect in books. So this sounds really, really interesting and I'm kind of excited to read this. The next book that I picked up was Beach Read. I know, I know. I bought all of these Emily Henry books before I read Emily Henry and so now I'm like, what am I gonna do? But if I end up liking people they meet or people we meet on vacation, then I'll read this one. If I don't like people we meet on vacation, then maybe I will just skip this one and unhaul it. Let me know if you read most of Emily Henry's books. Which one you like more? People we meet on vacation or beach read? Like which one is better? And which one do you think I will like more? And whatever one that you guys vote on, I will read first. Maybe I'll pin a comment down below and I'll say comment on it if you think beach read thumbs up it if you think people we meet on vacation. There you go. That's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so the next book that I picked up was Well Matched by Jen DeLuca. This is about two people that meet at a renaissance fair, and I think that sounds flippin' cute, and I've heard really good things about this, to be honest. Like, I've heard this particular book is really, really cute. Now, I don't know about the other ones. If I really, really like this one, then maybe I'll pick up the other ones that kind of go in this series, but I've heard good things about this specific one, and I think, where did I get this one? I can't remember where I got this, but it was really cheap, and so I was like, you know what? I've heard good things, I'm gonna pick it up, and I'm gonna try it out. So this will be really good when I'm in the mood for like a good romance. And then, this is a book I've wanted to read for a long time, I'm not gonna lie. Like, I always see it around, and I'm like, that looks right up my alley. I just hate the cover, it is so cheesy. But I had to buy it, because it's just like, I see it around, and I'm like, it looks like my type of book. And it is The Protector by Jodi Ellen Malpas, Malpas? I don't know. And this is your typical bodyguard romance. And I, ugh, I love a good like protector trope with like the really protective like male love interest and then you know, love that kind of stuff. I'm, I'm a damsel in distress girl. So like this type of book is right up my alley. I just read a bodyguard romance, which I'm gonna talk about in my next wrap up. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really interested in this. Plus the guy on this cover is pretty dang hot. And I'm like really, really interested in this. So if you guys have read this, let me know. I know that I'm not the only person that's seen this book around. And like, I'm super, super interested in it. So the next book is The Light Between Oceans. I picked this up at Goodwill. This was $4.99, but I've heard really good things about this book. This has been on my TBR on Goodreads Forever. So this is about a um, man that moves to this lighthouse and he meets this woman and they live at this lighthouse together and they want to have a family but I think that she can't have babies like she's having a hard time getting pregnant but she really 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 wants a baby and what ends up happening is this baby appears on shore in this little boat without a parent like he's just there like an abandoned baby and the wife decides that she wants to take this baby in and keep it and then what ends up happening is they end up moving to the mainland and they realize that they're not the only two people in this world because I can imagine being in a lighthouse you start to feel very secluded you kind of forget that there's more people on this earth and then I guess something ends up happening when they move to the mainland and it devastates one of them, which I would assume has something to do with the baby, I don't know, but I've heard this is really, really good, like I've heard really good things about it. So when I'm in the mood for something like deep and heart-wrenching and just like a very, very deep story, I think I'm gonna love this. And plus you guys know how I feel about lighthouses and books, like if you guys watched my last channel, lighthouses specifically was something that I said that I randomly really like in books. And this has that lighthouse, like beachy, like, not beachy, but like 
that gloomy coast vibe, which I love. So I'm really excited about this one. Okay, next is The Girls by Emma Klein. This is a uh, cult book. So it's a book about a cult and it's a book about a girl that like joins a cult. I've heard mixed things about this actually. Um, I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to think about this. I'm just going to kind of go into it and like hope for the best. I find books about cults really, really fascinating. So I think that there's a good chance that I'll like this, but who knows? If I don't, then I might just DNF it. We will see. I don't know. Because like I said, I've heard mixed things. So if you guys have read this, let me know what you guys think about it. But the only reason I bought this was because it was about a cult. Um, so yeah, The Girls by Emma Klein. Let me know what you guys think about it. So that is it for this little book haul. Well, it wasn't really little. It was very large. But those are kind of the books that I've picked up since the last time I hauled books for you guys. And yeah, I feel like there's a lot of really, really good ones here. And I'm really excited to read them. That is it, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. And let me know what book out of all of these books I should read first. Or what book you think sounds the best. Like what book you would want to read out of all of these. I'd be very curious to hear what you guys have to say. And I think that's it, guys. So I'll see you in my next video. And I will talk to you soon.